When I was a child, I became fascinated with how a tiny seed could germinate and grow into a large plant or a tree, for instance, from an itty bitty seed. That fascinated me and it never left me. I subscribed to Netflix shortly after high school and started watching a lot of documentaries on conventional food production, sustainability, minimalism, pollution, documentaries such as Food Incorporated, Super Size Me, The Devil We Know, and Plastic Paradise. They inspired me to rely less on others for my basic needs and to become more educated on how to provide for myself and my family. After purchasing this beautiful green acre in McGuanago, Wisconsin, I decided to start implementing some of those practices for myself. Sustainable living is a lifestyle that attempts to reduce the depletion of Earth's natural resources in order to maintain an ecological balance. As a society, we grow increasingly disconnected from our food source. I choose to remain connected. I grow as many fruits and vegetables as I can maintain on my single green acre. There isn't a supermarket with produce on the shelves as fresh and nutritionally rich or with a smaller carbon footprint than the crops I can grow in my own backyard. I enjoy being connected to the circle of life and the challenges involved in nurturing a crop from birth and growth through harvest and decline. I practice a no-till organic growing method in our garden. No pesticides, herbicides, insecticides, or artificial fertilizers are used. We cover our gardens with locally sourced chipped tree remains, pine straw and grain straw, as this reduces erosion continually builds organic matter as it decomposes, maintains moisture levels, and reduces nutrient-robbing weed growth. Additionally, this sustainable mulch does not compact, resulting in anaerobic soils. We harvest rainwater for use during germination periods or extended drought conditions to reduce groundwater consumption. I use heirloom seeds from open pollinated plants as they can be saved and handed down from generation to generation whereas hybrids and GMOs cannot. Open pollinated plants pass on similar characteristics and traits from the parent plant to the child plant. Because of this, heirlooms have a better flavor, are hardier against weather and pests, and adapt to local ecosystems better. I also practice companion planting. It has long been believed by gardeners that certain plants thrive when planted in combination with others in the garden. When planted together, these companion plants enhance growth repel pests, and improve the flavor of one another. Aside from the benefits to plants, companion planting uses a garden space more efficiently, which results in a greater yield. The diversity that companion planting provides is also good for pollinators, wildlife, and soil health. In mid-2020, we started raising chickens, which will provide us with beautiful fresh eggs and nutrient-rich manure. The chickens consume our garden and yard waste, as well as unwanted garden pests, to produce their delicious eggs and ultimately rich manure, which gets composted and added back into the garden to nourish our produce. This year we also partnered with a local beekeeper to have a couple of hives installed on our property. In addition to combating the loss of this vitally important pollinator, our orchards and gardens will produce larger yields with the added pollination assistance not to mention the delicious raw honey we were able to harvest, around 60 to 65 pounds from these two hives. In 2021, we plan to add another couple of hives, bringing our total to four, one of which will be personally owned by Sarah and myself. The human-animal bond is a mutually beneficial and dynamic relationship that has been understood for thousands of years. It wasn't until just recently that the average person has become almost entirely removed from this equation and thus sees livestock solely as a commodity for their own consumption and nothing more. My children will learn firsthand from a young age how to care for another living, breathing life and as a byproduct, develop a sense of pride for contributing to the food on our table. As far as household energy consumption goes, we've done the basics like installing LED bulbs, low flow faucets, hot water line insulation, a smart thermostat, energy efficient appliances, we have an outdoor clothesline, outlet foam insulators, and we clean our appliances regularly to keep them running at their maximum efficiency. 
it's a goal of mine in the future to install solar panels on our roof to at least partially go off grid and maybe even sell electricity back to the power company. As I mentioned in my previous video, I'm also a lifelong hunter, so I'm, at, I'm able to self-source a portion of the meat that we consume in our family. In addition to hunting, I also recently took up foraging for mushrooms and other edibles around our natural area. 2020 couldn't have been a more eye-opening year for the benefits and need for some self-sustainability in our society today. I'm very grateful for what our Green Acre is able to provide us with and only intend to continue to grow the amount of edibles that we produce here on our property.